Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar and together with my co-host Mark Ronich of Statewide News Service, jbiztechfilly.com. And as you can see here, calmness for the Jewish press. Right, Rabbi. I have, uh, I'm enjoying doing all of that, but in the column in the Jewish press, I have, it's called Albany Beat, and I talk about how government relates to the Jewish community or doesn't, as the case may be. So uh, we talk about government uh, and Jews. We have a combination of that. Uh, our return guest, uh, Assemblyman Steve Katz, from Yorktown in Westchester County, northern Westchester. Uh, welcome back to The Jewish View. Thank you. So it's great to see you again. Now, from what I understand, I have a bit of a disappointing uh, thing, no. that you're actually retiring no. from the Assembly. Correct. I and am I'm the only, I am the only legislator who is Announced. voluntarily <laughs> not, go, not going out in handcuffs. <laughs> How many years were you limiting using? myself out? How many years have you been there? Six years, three terms. You think that's enough? I mean, you think that's for any way? Is that your personal decision, or you think that's in general uh, an assemblyman should just well, this was time my, out after three terms? This was terms. my personal opinion, but I believe 100% uh, that eight years should be the maximum for everybody. If it's good enough for the President of the United States, it should be good enough for everybody, every elected official in this country, as far as I'm concerned. Having seen what I've seen, mm -hmm. I can guarantee you that. Now tell me, what have you seen? What has been your impression in your time in your six years in the legislature? A combination of rank corruption, uh, the uh, majority moving, uh, moving uh, its agenda along that, as far as I'm concerned, has been nothing but destructive to the state of New York. As we can see in terms of every single year, we have a $2 billion budget deficit in the state budget. Mm -hmm. in which our, our, uh, our revenue is $2 billion less than what we spend. Well, so that in itself should give a pretty, uh, pretty good idea of the, the dismal circumstances that we are living under. So is it a shell game? Where, because the oh, governor absolutely. and controller say that we're in the plus, we're in the black. No, we were in the black the one year that we got that court settlement. Yeah, okay? uh -huh. That was a one-year, one one-time deal. No, we're not in the black by any stretch of the imagination. Not even this year. We're only in the black. We're in the black because we do things like what they call sweeps. Uh -huh. Sweeps. We sweep out the uh, the publicly funded uh, 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 hmm. different agencies uh -huh. uh, to fill the general fund, so that we'll then be able to have There's a balanced budget. There's two ways budget. to get a balanced budget. You feel that the revenue should be increasing, be more business, yes. or just that cut out some of the fluff, and obviously you can cut out $2 billion and cut it down to size. Well, two ways to, you know, Well, number one, New it. York is never, with the politicians that we have running this place, never going to cut the budget, cut the fat, cut the, you know, all that stuff. That's not going to happen. What we need to do is have revenue enough to meet the demands that this state requires. Like That's a whole other ballgame. Which way? I mean, I, mean, I just the, all know. The different from. ways that can be done, number one, when you consider that New York State is number 50th in the desirability to open up a business in the United mm -hmm. States, that does not speak well for the regulations, the taxes, the, the encumbrances that are placed upon a small or middle-sized businessman here in the state of New York. It is that difficult. I am, I own a veterinary hospital in the Bronx that is considered a small business. I can promise you, I am mightily, I am mightily dis, you know, disengaged, number one, because I have nothing but encumbrances on me in the terms of fees, taxes, regulations, over, over oversight, that I have to endure, okay? I can never advance here in the state of New York with what I have to endure with. And so there's number one. Number two, you wanna have, you wanna have things that will increase our revenue. Businesses, we have things that are right available here right now. One is by being patriotic and helping us get away from Arab oil by becoming energy self-sufficient and having horizontal hydrofracking in the places in the west 
of the state that desperately need revenue, that look like neutron bomb cities because so many people have fled over in the last, in the last 10 years. We've had over 2 million people leave. Mm -hmm. That's where they've left. They haven't left New York City where they have all the wealth, you know, social welfare, social programs. That's not where they leave. They leave in the places in upstate New York that have no jobs, high taxes, and what are they going to do? No future. So that is one element. And the other one is to look to Colorado for adult use marijuana. Why, why do you say that's such a big thing? I mean, what, for revenue? Absolutely. For revenue, for the fact that right now it is uh, controlled by illegal cartels, much of that money ending up going to terrorist organizations. So yes, I would like to see that, considering that marijuana is the largest cash crop in the United States, and that we all grow up and be realistic. Prohibition is something that should have died in the 1930s for this too. And the reasons that it's even illegal or odious caused by a racist, by a racist bureaucrat in 1937 who tried to keep his job. So if you look into the history of it, it's odious enough. The fact that New York, Colorado this past year, with no extra illegal activity, no extra people going to jail, no, none of those things, because I'm there every other week. I have mm -hmm. a business there, okay? None of those things. They realized a revenue of a billion dollars for the state. If you consider, and they're using that for infrastructure and education, mm -hmm. and if you consider that New York is four times the size of Colorado, <laughs> There's your four billion dollars, two billion dollar deficit, and then you know what? We don't even expect to get the two billion dollars back. Go spend it as you see fit, and leave us alone now. Here's your revenue. That's what I would like to see. And you don't see with the marijuana, you don't see any negatives, like more people drugged out. Or... No, I haven't seen that. I've I've been a part of of legal marijuana industry, medical marijuana, okay, for the last three years ever since it, adult use became legal in Colorado. And I have a business right now that produces products for dogs mm -hmm. that for very specific conditions that happen to contain some compounds from the cannabis plant that absolutely don't get you high, that are non-addictive, and as a matter of fact, are what they use for children with the likes of Dravet syndrome where they have over 100 grand mal seizures a day. And they're given this as a liquid, as a, you know, a cherry-flavored liquid. It's called cannabidiol, CBD. Well-known, called Charlotte's Web mm -hmm. out in California. And, and as a member of the health committee uh, in the assembly, when I listened to, when they had the hearing on legal uh, uh, medical marijuana down in Mineola, New York, there were 10 families with children between two and ages of 10 that all suffered from Drave syndrome, and all ten, these were lawyers, store owners, the, 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 yeah. the flesh of our state, okay? That which makes our blood flow. And they were all leaving within 48 hours to go to Colorado because they couldn't obtain the medicine here in New York. So, so. Uh, what, now when, when you give this medicine to dogs, I mean, you don't know what the reaction... Well, you know 100% because it's... I, I have been, I'm a man of science, my dear friend. Yeah. This has been studied. As a matter of fact, my products currently are undergoing clinical trials at the University of Pennsylvania, College of Veterinary Medicine. Okay. So... That's why I was asking you more about it. it. No, yeah. it's, this is real medicine. Well, you know, what... For specific conditions, joint mobility, anxiety, pruritus, which is excessive scratching due to allergies. My practice in the Bronx happens to be an epicenter. Yeah. Just like it's an epicenter for, for uh, children's, um, not only allergies, asthma, children's asthma. Oh, Bronx, Bronx is very sure. big with, yeah. It's the same for dogs with allergies. So I've become one of the world's experts on allergies in dogs of my 20 plus years in yeah. the Bronx. And so that is what I made a formula for. Stop the itching. Okay? None of these have anything to do with the one. There are 400 different compounds in the cannabis plant, all of which have medicinal value that are currently being studied in some major institutions here in the United States for MS, for 
for uh, metastasis for, uh, for PTSD in soldiers which in Israel it's been legal for for the last 15 years. And no side effects no of side bad effects. things. Right. Take a look in Israel. Yeah. One, of the, one of the centers for learning of medical, the medicinal uses of cannabis, Dr. Mishulam at University yeah, of Tel Aviv. But there's a difference between, I don't know if anybody would argue with medical. I mean, you know, if someone needs something medically, obviously like steroids, for example, my sister's an oncologist and she says, I, uh, you know, I give out steroids every day, you know, but obviously for a normal person, it's actually... Uh, Here's you know, what I can tell you, okay? Uh -huh. Number one, it's certainly less dangerous and proven so than alcohol, okay? It's a different culture, yeah. okay? That's the only difference, because it's absolutely, it doesn't, it's not a gateway drug. You know what I do if, uh, when, I, when I give lectures, okay? And, I, and I'm in a, in a room with people my age, and I say to them, how many of you have tried marijuana when you were in college? Yeah. Okay. And how many of you are addicted to marijuana or heroin right now? Zero. <laughs> okay. That's the reality. It's just a reality check. It's time to grow up. There's nothing morally wrong with this on any level. I can give you for both on the medical side. And yes, there are people who can't tolerate alcohol, like myself, okay, who on occasion would like to relax in a way that is relaxing that I've had in my, as part of my culture since I've been in college in the 1970s. So, you know, with no, I don't, I don't think there's anything, you know, I think I'm pretty okay right now. You are. So is yes. the rest of the, the people that I deal with who are some of the leaders of industry, so who are some hedge fund managers, who are financiers, who are scientists. I'm dealing with a fascinating group of people in Colorado because I am at the cutting edge mm -hmm. of this entire 21st century, all natural. This is going to be the equivalent of, of uh, slippery elm bark, which produced aspirin for us, salicylic acid. And that's this, the research that's happening worldwide right now. Forget about all those negative stigmas and pejoratives. They are so 20th century right now that I can't begin to tell you. Just take a look at the model in Colorado. That's all you have to do. Don't have to reinvent the wheel. They've got all the laws. It's just like for alcohol. Yep. You sell it, you're going to be, you, to a minor, you're going to be in trouble. So let's go back for a minute to the state legislature. Sure. I mean, you have been there for, to see the people in the highest level of government being taken away in handcuffs or yeah. being indicted and convicted. I mean, what does what that I mean, do to, to your temperament in the legislature when you see this happening? And it's so frustrating because, you know, you're not, you know, wh whether it's Republican or Democrat, it doesn't matter. Absolutely. But it's something that's just so jarring. You know what it reaffirms for me? What I knew before I became a, an assemblyman or a politician of any sort, and that's we need term limits. You've got to get term limits. Well, they'll just That's, do the corruption in a short period of time. No, just well, no, joke. No. I'm joking. And if you have it so they, <laughs> they can't become lobbyists afterward? What That's a, what, look, here's my beliefs, okay? I, I, I laid forth from day one what I believed would, would make Albany clean, and they're pretty rigid. Yeah. You know, in terms of campaign finance, I'm, I'm personally for public campaign financing. Right. Okay, I don't want any of this stuff. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm for term limits, for sure, for everybody. Do you okay? sell you have two of those. Yeah, do you sell finance your campaigns? I did my first one. And what about your others? I didn't need a lot of money after that. You didn't so have a I lot of... I had a couple of fundraisers for not a lot of money. So how much did it cost you to run... Does the it first time? Yeah. $170,000. Okay. And you had a primary and all that because it was an open seat. And I had a primary that because I, had, I was not the Republican-endorsed candidate. No, you weren't, That's and right. you beat that. Yeah. Correct, correct. Who did you run? Who was the Republican endorsement? Borkowski, his name was. Oh, okay. So, okay. and he just went away. He never challenged you again, or no, no. Do you think he'll run now that it's an open seat again, or is he out of the district? No, he's not going to run again. There's a there's a few people that are going to run that will are you, running. Will now. your seat flip to a Democrat? No, no, it'll remain Republican. Because of the enrollment, or essentially, it's it's still a a red district. 
Okay. Okay. Amid, not in the amidst the sea of blue. Not in the red. red not in the red, but no, it's a red. No, no, it's not in the red. Uh, it's so not part of Westchester is yet. So <laughs> northern. So your district is northern Westchester and most of Putnam. Yes. Not all of Putnam. Not all. No. Four of the six towns. Right. So, so. what do you um, see as the uh, as the your successor? Who is your successor going to be? Kevin Byrne. Kevin Byrne. B Kevin Byrne. B y r n e. e. He's a young man. Irish. Who's been uh, Scotch Irish. Well, not Jewish. He's so not Jewish. We're going to lose another we're Jewish gonna, seat. Correct. This is the the, the, the Hamish seat is is about the, to be lost. You know, okay. we, we Alan Maisel left. Not, Alec Brokresny. Okay. No. <laughs> Mainly because there was none to choose from. That's number one. And number two, I'm going to certainly always go with the person who I believe would serve our no, I assembly district the best. No and, doubt. Yeah, but. And, and Kevin Byrne is a good man. He plays the bagpipes at all the all the events. Oh. He's been a he's been a, a real asset to Putnam County ever since he's been. Let me just go back to your list of how to correct government because I think that's very important. You said public financing, your term limits. Term limits. Those are the uh, main uh, two. Uh, no, if the other one is that. Every single bill, number one, you don't need to be in Albany for more than two months out of this year. I know it. I've seen it. They bleed this thing out for six months so they get paid, so they can justify their, their, justify their pay. Truly, we have days Monday and Tuesday. I've never seen anything like it, and it's simply for the sake of keeping their salary. It costs us $41.5 million a month to keep the legislature up in Albany. If we were able to actually do what we're supposed to do, which work every day from 10 to 4, call it 10 to 4, That's, there's banker's hours for it. We don't do anything like that, okay? We would finish all the work and then some, mm -hmm. okay? And save our state, the taxpayers, $165 million a year. For the extra four months or something. Like Absolutely. That. Well, I mean, originally, no. remember, the, the, assembly, the, the legislature met for three months out of the year? Yeah, they left in March, yeah. Okay. They, that was the, for, for over for 150 years, they, that's how they met. And, the, and, so, and so now mm. they did that to justify a pay raise. And so, in, so back then, they did two, worth, two months' worth of work in three months. Now they do two months of worth of work in six months. <laughs> and now they're having the chutzpah to ask for a year's worth of, a, you know, to but be full time to get paid more. But I I've think never it's, seen anything so outrageous in my life. I think it's the same number of days just spread out over six months as opposed to the three months. Yes, exactly. It's the that's same the as the three months. And that's they, the scam of it. Yep, 55 legislative days. And they had that same. in three, yeah, right. That's right. So it's a shell game. It gives once, them more time to again. think about and ponder these like, heavy like issues. The budget. <laughs> we had to think about the budget for an hour before we started to vote on it. And there were parts of that budget, parts of that budget, it said on it TBD. To be determined. To be determined. How much they're going to, you know, it's going to cost us taxpayers. And we actually voted for it. We voted to pass it. Except you. Uh, we, of course not. No. Of course I did. <laughs> Uh, is that any way to be a responsible steward of a hundred and fifty-four billion dollar budget? I dare say no. And I wanted us to walk out, all of us, even the Democrats, just to tell the governor that no, we are not your rubber stamp. Yeah. You have this pathologic need to get it done on the 31st. This was on Friday the 31st. Right. Do you think anybody in this state, other than yourself, <laughs> could care less if it gets passed on Monday, where we at least would get to properly vet it, take it back to our constituents, actually read it maybe, before we voted on it. It's only for him. And that is sick. That is psychotic. Okay, to have the audacity to do that to my state and to make us look like fools like that. Mm. No, it's Democrat or Republican. You have separation of the separation of uh, of of the uh, the different uh, what is it executive branch right. and the and the legislative branch, and right? And the, ju judicial. And the judicial branch, right. right? They're supposed to be separate. We are nothing but a rubber stamp of the governor. It's disgraceful. And what you know, the the Republicans in the Assembly are like 42 yeah, members, they're, 41, they're, 42 they're, they're, members. They're not even an afterthought at this point. Honestly, we're, you know, we lose every 110 to 40 every single vote. It's so it doesn't make, you know, I mean, 
it's ridiculous. You, where, where it makes a difference is in the Senate, right. and those Senate Republicans are utterly feckless and have no theology other than the religion of my re, re, uh, 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 re campaigning once again and getting re-election. Re yeah. Okay, that is that is their theology. I've never seen anything like it. There's not one leader up there in the Senate. None. Zero. So it's a sad state that we're in, and I, I hate but to talk it, about it like you this. Know, why don't you run a little bit, you know, instead of running away, maybe you should raise yourself up a little bit. Because I'm a citizen legislator, and I've, do I've done what I said I would do. I've, I have spoken for the people who believed in me and voted for me and what I believed in and what we believed in, and I believe that it's time for someone else to do this. I'm going back into the private sector because my personal mantra is to... Jobs, job creation, job creation. Mm -hmm. And in my, in my business already, we've created 20 jobs. That's what I intend to do across the country. Really? This what do you, what, what do you plan on doing? Yeah, across that's the thing exactly what. I'm sorry? Well, what, what do you plan on doing? What kind of business? My business is I'm a veterinarian by right. trade, and I invented so far three different formulas for different conditions in dogs that have absolutely been remarkable in their effectiveness. And so now I partnered with a large company out in Colorado, and we are currently manufacturing it and selling it worldwide. And it's taking up more and more of my time. Would and you close up your practice? that is being effective to me. That's doing something, yeah. really doing something. I'm employing people, I'm giving people jobs. That's what we're all about. And it's the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial spirit, spirit of America. Yeah. It's the spirit of entrepreneurialism of, of our history, and I'm just following that in, a, in, as, in as trying to walk as righteous a path as my Judaism has taught me for my whole life. Yeah, Tell me, uh, are you going to give up your veterinary practice? Or? No. I go there one. I'm usually there once a week these so, days. So you'll be able to I'll be able to manage, continue that. Yes, we to, have, a, I have, a, I have staff who you know, other veterinarians taking care of it. And do you have a certain patients, so to speak, who say, I only want to see Dr. Katz? That's why I'm there once a week. That's why you're there once a week, okay. Yeah, those are the people I see, the people <laughs> who want to see me. Because I, I, I know that there's a connection of, uh, between the uh, owner and the pet and the doctor. It's a and spiritual connection. It is, it really Absolutely. is. It's a, it's a bond of love, 100%. They call on me when they have a when their normal routine of love with, with their pet is somehow broken, are you, that's when I get the call. Are you going to miss Pet Advocacy Day here at the legislature? Well, I was never invited to it, number one. I'm the only veterinarian in, <laughs> in the legislature. Why? Why? Never, because it was started by someone who has severe psychiatric problems, and that's Greg Ball. And, you know, we don't need to talk about him anymore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I thought it was, I mean, now Jim Tedisco is... He's you know, following that tradition. Oh, well, now he'll be, it's in, a the, tradition. Now he'll be in the Senate, so, <laughs> and you're out, so, okay. Oh, uh, it's amazing. Um, is it, you know, you, you have a lot of bills here that are pet-oriented. Uh, uh, you have a bill relating to requiring animal dealers to disclose information about disposition of unwanted pets, animals kept as pets. Uh, you know, is that something, I mean, will you regret not being able to do anything with these? You have a, a, a bill the relating bills. to backyard animal breeding. I mean, Here, you know. Let me tell you about the bills, okay. Number one, that would be one of the changes that, would, that I would have right now is that, number one, any bill that goes before the assembly has to have a Senate companion. That's number one, because I can't tell you. Yeah at least a third of the bills that we waste our time on are one-house bills that have no chance of becoming the law. Because they're one-house bills. Mm -hmm. That for sure. And number two, I would allow every member, Republican or Democrat, to be able to have at least X number of bills <laughs> per year, let's call it six, half a dozen, that doesn't go through committee, that goes straight to the assembly floor to be voted on. Because in since 1974, if you consider that roughly a thousand bills a year are voted on by the assembly, that's our average, 
Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's 1,100, 1,200. Yeah. It's never less than nine. Right. Okay. Most in the country, more than the more than the Congress. But uh, if you if you can if you consider that we've had since 1970, call it 41,000 bills that have been voted on. Okay. Right, right. If you take away the home rule bills, which everybody right. votes for you, okay, like yeah. don't count count those. That's that leaves you roughly 26,000 bills. Do you know how many of those were? were authored by a Republican and went through the assembly and vote upon favorably and then became the law? I could count 10. Five. Five, okay, well, there you go. Five <laughs> out of 26,000. So, you know, that sort of gives you an idea, the odds that we, you know, we call, any bill that we put in, what do we call that bill before it goes to, before it goes, before the committee and, and goes through the whole, we call it death, death row. Okay. Okay, that's what it is, because we know it's never gonna pass it. So things like term limits, okay, right, things right. like reducing taxes, things like that that we want to put in never see the light of day because they refuse to take it out of the committee. What about to have the guts to vote on it? Get, get, let's hear you vote on it. Do you, how do you feel about term limits? Are you going to vote for it or no? We'll never know. Never. What about the uh, uh, Spirit of 76 bill that Jim Tedisco has been pushing where it needs 76, uh, you know, bills should come to the floor with 76 members sponsoring it or supporting it as opposed to 76 Democrats only supporting it, you know. I'll take anything, anything to help. To help but you right know, now. but are you, are you... Am, am I fervent about it? It's, a, to, it's another, anything to chip away at that, at, you know. Honestly. You know, I wrote a column that's in the Jewish press that said, when does 76 not... Uh, the majority of 150, right. and the, when the assembly does the counting, mm -hmm. <laughs> the assembly does the math, and then I explained what that meant, yeah. because you know it's essentially you know there are several bills that you know could go to the floor with Republican help, and be voted on, and it just isn't happening. Not many, you know. Okay. Not many. So what do you think of on your way out? What do you think of Brian Kolb as the leader? Is he feckless? <laughs> <laughs> See. He does the best he can, given the fact that we're going to lose every vote, 110 to 40. Doesn't give him a whole lot of leeway or leverage, does it? So, given that fact, he's doing a fine job. Oh, okay. okay. I mean, well, people just, on the other hand, at least, you're right, maybe in actuality he can pass, but he should be screaming, you know, just throwing it out to the public, hey, this is craziness, or... I, you know, I, I believe that the, the, we could have made a little bit of a difference had we walked out during the budget vote. Mm -hmm. Because then at least the New York Times would have picked that up. New York State Assembly Republicans walk out refusing to vote on something they, they caught, they got in an hour. Okay, so that would have made a difference. Something, something a little more. Yeah, uh, that would be nice. Yeah, but, some know, grandstanding or whatever. I'm, I'm yeah. all for that. Yeah. You got I've it. been since I got here. <laughs> uh, what did we not talk to you about that you'd like to leave us as a parting, parting words? Uh, I think we pretty much covered everything. I mean, I, 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 this has been a very fascinating experience for me. Uh, I met some incredible people. That was the best thing about it. Serving my district was by far the best thing about it. Coming to Albany was the worst thing about it. Wow. Because I lost every vote, 110 to 40, and didn't have a chance to give any of 30 years of business advice to this state who refuses to hear anything other than, uh, other than pandering to, number one, New York City and its social requirements. Wow. So um, what do you, uh, do, do you have any hope for this legislature, you seem to be really no, down, don't. you know. I don't, no, not, not in its current makeup and currently the way it, the Constitution is with it and uh, the coziness and the, the iron will that the governor places on it. The combination of that is killing our state and all you need to do is, you know, can anybody try to maybe take a look and see why two million people left in the last 10 years? Can anybody take a look in the mirror and, you know, who's responsible for this and actually try to do something about it? Because we have not tried to do anything about this in the last six years that I've been there. I promise you, nothing. 
But you know, the, the population in the state keeps, you know, does go up according to the census. I and mean, if you look where? It's just not going not up the, as fast as no, the other it's states. It's up in the New York, greater New York City area. It is dying upstate. Right. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. Schenectady, Utica, you name it. Do you think the Jamestown. casino, are the casinos going to have anything? No, that's a, it's a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a terrible tax placed on, on, on the good people. Take a look at Atlantic City. Did it do anything for Atlantic City? Ever been to Atlantic City? Well, you I go understand. to Atlantic City for, the, for five miles before you hit the, before you hit the uh, hotels, yeah. you have one after another. We buy gold. We buy gold. We buy gold. There's a reason that they're thriving, those pawn shops, mm. S buying gold. Why do you think? And then there's nothing around that area. Christ. You just got the, the strip, and the rest of it is just as it was when it was blighted before, the, before they started building the casinos and promised, made so many promises to the people so of the state. So you don't see the no, you know, Catskills You don't see the Catskills Absolutely booming? Not. And First of all, every state now around us has Massachusetts, right. has it. Connecticut. Uh, Connecticut, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania right. New Jersey, obviously. Right. So, you know, no. That's, they're, over the course of this past year, there was a 3% net loss nationally at casinos for exactly that, you know. Well, na well, now that we're starting at zero, we don't have a net loss. We can only, <laughs> we'll be at the low, you know, buy, buy low, sell high, you know, there so you we're, but we're getting in at the low level. <laughs> we are getting in the low level. Okay. Unfortunately, we'll stay right there, too. Well, it's been a pleasure, yeah, Steve. Steve really. did, you know, you did some great work and, um, in the assembly, and we give you the blessing for more success in what your Thank you so much, future Robert. endeavors and do it with good health. It's Thank been you. a pleasure, so, Steve. So Thank you. Thank you.